but not in his original form. He expands himself into his four-armed form, known as Narayan, or Vishnu. And thus, he presides over all the Vaikuntha planets. Once, on one of these blissful Vaikuntha planets, two gatekeepers of Lord Narayan, known as Jai and Vijay, were pondering how they could better serve the Lord. Sometimes, the Lord wishes to fight. But who can fight with the Lord except for one of his confidential associates? How can we ascend to the material world to please the Lord's desires to fight? Once you have achieved residency in Vaikuntha, you cannot descend to the material world. The bodies of the residents of Vaikuntha are completely spiritual, having nothing to do with the material bodies, life heirs, or senses. When the Lord travels down to the material world, He goes there through the agency of the internal potency. And likewise, when the devotees and associates of the Lord travel down to the material universes, they go through there through the action of the spiritual energy. We know the Lord desires to fight, but we cannot simply act like demons. We must truly become demons. Yes, how can we truly become demons? The sons of Brahma, who are known as the Kumaras, came to visit Lord Narayan, the supreme personality of Godhead. The Kumaras are great sages and are always seen traveling together throughout the universes. Although they are many thousands of years old, they appear as only small boys of about five or six. In this way, the Kumaras came to pay their respects to Lord Narayan and his beautiful paths of Touchstone. Stop! Not just anyone can enter into the palaces of Lord Narayan, you must have proper purification and be of great quality. My dear boys, great sages and mystics perform austerities for thousands of years just to catch a glimpse of the feet of Lord Narayan. You boys could not have qualified yourselves through these processes. You must go home. Yes, go back home and come back in a few thousand years. Please allow us to enter into the palace. We wish to see Lord Narayan. For this injustice, we curse you both to take birth in the material world and to death. very much a 
astonished to see your endurance, in spite of being eaten and bitten by all kinds of worms and ants. You are keeping your life air circulating within your bones. <laughs> Certainly, this is wonderful. Even saintly persons, like Brigu, who were previously, who could not perform such severe austerities, nor will anyone in the future be able to do so. You are not perfect in the performance of your austerities, and therefore, you may ask me whatever you desire, and I shall try to fulfill your wish. I offer my obeisances to the original personality within this universe, Lord Brahma, who is cognizant you can apply his mind and realized intelligence in creating this cosmic manifestation. You are the supreme soul, the super soul of all living entities. You are beginningless, endless, and omniscient, beyond, beyond the limits of time and space. O oh my Lord, O oh best of givers of benedictions, if you will kindly grant me the benediction I desire, Please grant me that I will never be killed by any of the living entities created by you. Oh, Hiranyakashi Buu, this benediction I cannot give you. For you see, even I must die. Please, ask for something else. Then grant me this, that I may never be killed in the sky or on the ground. Yes. Grant me this, that I may never be killed during the day or during the night. That's all right. And grant me this, that I may never be killed by any weapon. I comply. Grant me this, that I may never be killed inside or outside. Of course, that's all right. <laughs> Grant me this, that I may never be killed by a man or a beast. Yes. Give me sole lordship over all living entities and desired things. Give me all the glories obtained by that position. Furthermore, give me all the mystic powers obtained by long austerities and the practices of yoga, for these cannot be lost of any time. Oh, Haranyakashi Poo, these benedictions you have asked for me are difficult to attain for most men. Nonetheless, oh my son, I shall grant them to you, although they are generally not available. Now I must take my leave. Good day. Blessings. <laughs> no! Kashipu's power was spreading rapidly throughout the universe, endangering the residents of the heavenly planets. And so, they kidnapped his pregnant wife, Kayadu. They were planning on executing her child, believing the child to be a greater demon than his father. Just then, Narnamuni entered playing his eternal vena and singing.
because he would. If he is allowed to be born, he could destroy the whole universe. No, no, my dear Pentagon. This chick lady is carried within her womb a great devotee of the supreme personality of Godhead. Even if you wanted to, you could not harm him. His name is Prahlad Maharaj. To my ashram, and we will be safe until the arrival of your husband. <laughs> Although Prahlad Maharaj was born in a family of Asuras, he himself was not an Asura but a great devotee of Lord Vishnu. Unlike the other Asuras, he was never envious of Vaishnavas. He was not agitated when put into danger, and he was neither directly nor indirectly interested in fruitive activities described in the Vedas. Indeed, he considered everything material to be useless and therefore, he was completely devoid of all material desires.